Hello, I'm Dr Ellie Jameson and this week I'm going to be talking about butterflies and moths. So what are they, uh, why are they important and what's their life cycle like? So butterflies and moths are insects <laughs> and Lily really likes butterflies and moths, don't you? Find out what butterflies and moths we can find outside and look at caterpillars and see if we can grow them and turn them into butterflies. So butterflies um, often have brightly coloured wings and this helps them to attract a mate. And then he's playing with that own little butterfly that we've just made. Um, so moths also can be colourful, but a lot of moths are in shades of brown and grey. Some moths come out at night, but some also come out during the day. So the life cycle of moths and butterflies is very similar. They start off as an egg and then out of the egg, Hatches. What hatches out of eggs? Um, um, What's the baby a called? Caterpillar. Yeah, a baby caterpillar comes out those eggs and then it eats and eats and eats and eats till it grows and then it forms something called a chrysalis or a pupa and this is where the magic happens. So that caterpillar undergoes something called metamorphosis which is a change where it goes from a caterpillar completely change all the different body parts and then it comes out as a butterfly. Yay! It emerges as a butterfly. So when the butterfly first comes out of its chrysalis, its wings are quite soft and wet and wrinkly. So it pumps some liquid inside its wings. So this is called hemolymph. It's a bit like blood and this helps pump out those wings and then lets them dry out. And then when they dry out, it can fly off and try and find a mate. So when it finds a mate, um, this fertilizes the eggs and then butterflies can lay up to 500 eggs at one time and these eggs can be round, they can be oval, they can be smooth, bumpy or wrinkly on the surface and they're often laid in slightly hidden places but on a plant that those caterpillars would like to eat. So like on the undersides of leaves, in parts of the flower or on the stems of plants is often where these eggs get laid. So then um, the caterpillars come out of those eggs and they eat that plant where they're laid. Um, and they can lay lots and lots of eggs at one time and not all of those eggs are going to survive. So they make sure there's enough eggs to make more butterflies for next year. Um, and then when they go into their chrysalis, the outside of this chrysalis is hard um, and it helps to protect them from predators. And they often make their chrysalis somewhere quite hidden so that nothing can eat them while in this stage because they can't run away while they're inside the chrysalis. So they can be in the chrysalis for just a couple of weeks or they can be in there for months as well and sometimes they spend the winter inside a chrysalis and then hatch out as a butterfly, or not hatch out, come out as a butterfly in the spring. Um, so while they're inside the chrysalis the whole body is changing so they're growing new legs, they're growing wings, they're getting antennae, all the different bits that they need to be a butterfly. And then when they come out as a butterfly, um, they will start feeding and try and find a mate. So butterflies don't have lips or teeth like we do, and they just feed with a really long tongue. So how long is your tongue, Lily? Do you think that'd be long enough to drink the next out of a flower? Mm. Not quite. So butterflies have really long, thin tongues, which are really good. For sucking the nectar out of flowers and that's often what they feed them. If they so, land on the flowers they don't have to stretch their neck no. that far. No they don't really have a neck do they just their yeah. head and body are all one piece on the butterfly so they just stick their tongue out to get that nectar um, and they can um, also look around for ah! plants to lay their eggs on so they find the plants they need to lay their eggs on using their different senses so it can either bite sight using their eyes or it can be smell or taste of the plants which helps them to work out what's the right plant to lay their eggs on so once they found that right plant then they can lay lots of eggs and the butterfly stage where they're mating and laying eggs um, can last either just a couple of days or it can be months and they can spend um, from one summer until early the next summer as a butterfly before they die. So, and that often depends on the species of butterfly, <laughs> but also on the weather at the time, as to how long they live. So in Britain, um, butterflies can either spend the winter 
as an egg, so the eggs will get laid at the end of one year and then hatch out and spring the next, or they might spend the winter as a caterpillar, or they might spend the winter in a pupa so they're protected, or they might carry on as a butterfly and they might slow down and hibernate in the coldest bit. And some butterflies that we get in Britain can't actually cope with the cold here at all, so they go, they do all their breeding in the south and then they just fly up here in the summer and they don't stay here. Um, so caterpillars and butterflies get eaten by lots of different things, so they get eaten by lots of birds, um, maybe some reptiles and small mammals as well. So to protect themselves from all these things wanting to eat this juicy little caterpillar, they have different ways to protect themselves. So they can protect themselves by having hairs all over the caterpillars or spines on the caterpillars. Um, they can have chemicals that they make, which are poisonous to these animals. Um, they might camouflage themselves, so either being the same colour as the plants around them or look like something else. So some caterpillars look like bird poos to stop things eating them. Um, and also, as well as camouflaging themselves, they might have colours, so warning colours, which tell other creatures not to eat them, that they've got nasty chemicals in them, that they don't taste nice. So these warning colours can be black, red and yellow. Um, they can also be really bad smelling, like the swallowtail butterfly. Can you just move out the way of the camera? Um, so to get lots of butterflies and moths in your garden, it's important to have things that they like to eat. So the types of plants they like have lots of different plants, uh, flowers that have nectar, some wild areas which have plants from the area that you live in growing there that you don't cut the lawn, you just allow it to grow a bit. Um, flowers, especially British wildflowers or whichever part of the world that you're from, have those flowers from that country. In this country they also like nettles, they love nettles, so keep your little area where you have some nettles growing, it's useful. Um, and not using herbicides, which are things which kill plants you don't want, and not having insecticides in your garden is really important. So what we're going to see, to see what moths are in our garden, we're going to try and build a moth trap and see if we can attract in some moths and then see what's What's there the following morning and let them free. Well yeah so if there's any butterflies which are attract which come out at night and are attracted to light then we might attract those as well. And what other things do you think we might find that like lights and come towards it in the night time? Might find some different insects in there as well as our moths might we. So what we're going to do we've got um, so we're just using a small tub but a bucket would be really good and then what we need to put in here is a funnel so the moths find it fairly easy to get into but difficult to get out. You might want to put a baffle underneath your funnel as well. Yeah, so we've caught our first moth, haven't we? Yeah. And then also at the bottom of here we're going to put our light in here. So I've just got an old cloth bag. So it's from my university. So we're going to make this cloth bag into a funnel and this will be nice on the moth's wings. It shouldn't damage the moth's wings as they're going into our bucket, should it? Um, And so we don't want to damage their wings because if their wings are damaged they won't be able to fly and then they won't be able to mate or find food. So we're going to be very careful with their wings. So you could also use maybe some... We we think that plastic might damage their wings so we're trying to stay away from just plastic bags or something. But maybe a funnel made out of an old milk bottle or something like that. So to make our bag into a funnel we're just going to cut a little corner off our bag to make a hole big enough for the moths to crawl or fly inside but make it difficult for them to find their way out and then the next morning we'll see what's in there but then we're going to let them all out again aren't we so that they can go and mate and do all those things that they need to do. Right so we've got a little corner cut in our bag, a white bag so that the light will shine through it and they'll be attracted into there. They should be able to find their way down through the little hole at the bottom of our bag and into our bucket. Yeah, because this, mm-hmm. they, the the mole could. So that that moth that butterfly is a little bit too big to squeeze through our hole. So might they might need to fold their wings up to be able to get inside. So yeah, now, how do you fold your wings? Well, real moths can fold their wings straight against their back, so they'll be able to squeeze in. But like your one is a bit more difficult to fold up, isn't it? Mommy, right. So now we've got a little hole put in the bottom. And on a nice dry night, so it's meant to thunder tonight, so we might not do it tonight, but on a nice dry night, we're going to put this outside with the light on in the bottom. 
in the dark of night and the moth should be drawn towards the light of our torch and go down our tunnel and hopefully not be able to find their way out straight away so we can see what's there the next morning. We're going to record what we found, aren't we? And then we'll let them go and then we can do it on a few different nights. So we're just going to use a normal, um, we're just using a bike light for this one. We're just using a normal white torch. The moths actually like UV light the best, so if you've got a little UV torch, you can leave that in the bottom there and see what we catch. Okay, thank you for listening. Enjoy, see you next time. Bye.